Welcome to Learning to Program in C++. This is Todd Gentile. Um, we're going to take our first steps here. You're going to need to get some tools. Um, so I'm kind of assuming you're on Windows for this demonstration, but these tools will work on Linux and on Mac. And in fact, it's a little easier to do on Mac and Linux. So if you have those computers, follow along, and then I'll tell you what steps you can skip. So. Um, the first thing we're going to do is uh, get the required tools and for an integrated development environment we're going to use Eclipse uh, which is very similar to the Wind River tool. In fact the Wind River tool that Torbot uses is based on Eclipse so a lot of what you learn um, using this IDE will apply to the final uh, IDE you're going to use for programming the robot and uh, the tool chain is going to be minimalist new for Windows um, now this is the, the step obviously that Mac and Linux people will probably be able to skip. Most uh, Linux installs include a C++ compiler and I know my Mac already includes one so you don't need this. So uh, let's get started. Um, you can just type Eclipse into a search engine and it should be the first hit is the Eclipse Foundation. Uh, this is all open source, this is all free. So you just kind of go over here, say download Eclipse. Um, and scroll down and you'll see Eclipse IDE for C slash C++ developers and then um, there's a Windows 32 and a 64-bit and I would recommend even if you're on a 64-bit uh, version of the Microsoft operating system that um, you get the 32-bit and if you're on Mac or Linux you should uh, this page is sort of intelligent you should see the links for your operating system automatically here. So let's go ahead and just click the link for Windows 32-bit and you'll go to a, um, a selection of mirrors. Just use the default. It'll probably work for everybody. So you just click right there and then at the bottom, okay, so in Windows it's going to ask us, this is a little big, where we want to store this. Um, and probably I'm on an external drive here. Um, wherever you normally keep your downloads is, is fine. Um, I'm going to put all this in a folder and uh, I'll just call it um, let's just call this the Torbots folder. Okay, click Save. And then, this is a pretty big download, 143 megabytes depending on your collection. It may take a little bit of time. Um, so I'll, I'll pause the recording when things are going to take a long time and then we can uh, I'll resume. Okay, the Mac and Linux users can skip this next step, um, but we will be going through the basic Hello World demo in this um, screencast, so you may want to fast forward to closer to the end. Uh, if you're on Windows, you need to you can do a search on uh, MinGW and you'll see this minimalist new for Windows and just click that link that'll take you to their home page and then you can scroll down and there's downloads right here and usually what I do is the first thing it'll say looking for the latest version so instead of trying to find it through their directories I just go right here click that um, and your download will start, start in a couple of seconds so we're gonna let that go I'll take a quick look at um, put that in the same same location and uh, and and I believe this probably installs a fairly minimal uh, set of tools that's then going to go get the latest versions of everything when the installer actually runs. Okay, so that finished. Um, all right, let's do the uh, install for MinGW first. You can do these in any order, but you just go ahead to this exe and double click it, and uh, it says you know all the normal warnings about running things that you've downloaded from the internet. So we're going to say run and we're going to get a little wizard here. And you can't just blindly click through this. Um, let's click download the latest repository catalogs. Uh, agree to the license after you read the whole darn thing. Actually this is all the new general public license so this is all pretty nice stuff. Um, and let's browse and let's actually, just to keep everything organized, um, let's create a folder. Um, you can't do it from this window, so I'm just going to go to the OS, open a window, go to my C drive, and I'm going to say, there's a, just say new folder here, and let's create a folder called dev. Then we can put all our 
tools for doing C++ in the dev folder. Okay, so now let's go back to the installer and instead of just sticking mingw at the root level, let's put it at the dev folder at mingw like that. Okay, then say next. Um, it'll create shortcuts. Uh, don't really need this. You can if you want. There's um, Okay, so here you can see it's by default it's only giving us the C compiler. We want the C++ compiler, and I believe the C++ compiler requires the C compiler, so you can leave that checked. And the other set of tools you'll need are the msys tools, and actually what I've done is just pick this mingw developer toolkit. seems like the safest install. So get make sure C++ compiler is clicked, then this toolkit, click next, um, and then click install. And it's going to open a DOS window for you. Let me put this over here, and uh, this is going to this is going to go on for a while. So I'm going to again pause the recording, and uh, so you don't have to watch all that. Okay, I'm resuming temporarily. The first command window went away, and then the second window opened up, and it was blank for five or ten seconds, and it's been about a minute. Um, okay, and then we're going to let this one go. Okay, on my development laptop, which is fairly fast and has a solid state drive, that took five minutes to download and the installers ran for two minutes. Your installers may run for quite a bit longer than that, um, but so expect at least seven minutes of time to finish that step. Um, and if you care about logs, you can display it. I don't really care, so we'll just say finish. Um, so this was our download, but we put these tools, as you recall, over here and see and move this onto the screen so you can see it. Dev and so now we have a min GW folder. Um, oh and it looks like it created a msys folder in here as well. Okay and I think we're gonna need both of these but so let's uh, let's go install Eclipse. Eclipse is a little bit easier of an install. It's all downloaded. You can just uh, whatever unzipping tool you have in Windows 7 you can just right click and say extract all. Um, so that's what I'm going to do, and then I'm going to go browse and put that in the same place. I'm just going to go to the C folder, and I know some of this is off screen. Um, dev, and um, actually, let's just create. I think it's going to take a chance here. I think it's going to create its own folder called Eclipse. So I'm just going to let it go there and say extract. It's doing, yeah, you can see there's the folder Eclipse. So, two minutes remaining. Again, we're going to pause the screencast. Okay, so that finished. It was more like three or four minutes. And um, so now we have an Eclipse folder here. And there's the Eclipse program. So you can do whatever's most convenient for you. You can make a shortcut to that somewhere if you'd like so that it's easier to get your development environment started. But before we do that, uh, we have one more step we have to do. The, um, the MinGW tools, um, Eclipse won't know about them. It doesn't know where you've stored your compiler tools. And they're actually in this bin directory and in this msys directory. Let me just take a quick look here. I believe we'll need make at a minimum. And I believe they stick make in here. And there it is. Okay, so let's. What we want to do on Windows is you want to adjust your path environment variable. Let me drag my 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 computer icon here. Okay, so what you do is you go to your my computer icon, go to properties. I'm gonna have to resize everything. Okay, and this is Windows 7, but it should be similar for whatever system you're on. On Windows 7, go to advanced system settings. Okay, and you'll get this dialog. Go to environment variables and this is one of my least favorite things about Windows. Go to Path and say Edit and you get this huge window for editing these very long uh, variable names. Okay now you noticed when we started everything was was highlighted. Make sure you click off that. You do not want to change the things that are already in here. This could stop your computer from doing what it normally does. So you want to get you want to right arrow I'm right arrowing over to the end of this list and actually instead of just typing this in freehand let's make it a little bit easier let's come back uh, we don't need this folder anymore let's come back to uh, especially for this for dev 
because we're so many levels deep. In Windows 7, when you get here, you can just click here and it turns it into that more familiar path. Hit Control C. Let's come back here. Make sure you're at the end. Hit a semicolon and then Control V will paste that whole path in. I always add the slash. I don't know if it's necessary, but do it. Add that slash. Hit another semicolon. Come back here again. Click on Dev. Um, and we want MinGW, we want the bin folder. And I click up here again, and I'm hitting Control C. You can type all this by hand if you want. And then I'm pasting that path in. Okay, so now both these paths are in our environment path variable. So our tool should be able to find those. And I put them at the end. Um, now, this is my development machine, and I have other development tools on here. So the next step may not work for me but it should work it should work for you and uh, okay so there we are at the end and um, I'm going to click OK and the only thing important about where you put these things is it's a good idea not to put paths with spaces in them or funky symbols just you don't have to use these names but it's good to keep them short and it's and and if you can use these names then we won't have any problems we'll all be on the same page when we're discussing tool locations so say OK and say OK. Now since we haven't started Eclipse, we don't, uh, it, it should pick up that path the first time. If we had already started it, we would have to quit it and go back again. So let's go to Dev, let's go to Eclipse, and now let's launch Eclipse for the first time. Uh, we can take this off or we're going to get this asked every time we run Eclipse because it was downloaded from the internet. So we'll clear that and say Run. And uh, this is where our other any Mac or Linux users want to tune back in. I'll annotate the YouTube video. Okay, Eclipse uses the concept of a workspace and uh, what we're going to do is, is we're going to go create one in the same place. I'm going to move this so we can see it here. I'm going to come back to Dev and I'm going to create another new folder here and let's just call this um, C++ Projects. Okay, you can call this anything you want. Um, then you just browse to that path from this director from this box. So computer C dev C projects. And it asks this question every time. If you <clears throat> because like when I develop I have multiple um, workspaces I use. But you can say use this as default and do not ask again and it'll skip this step for you. Um, but so you've got that set, you say okay and then this progress bar will fill in and this will probably be slower on your machine and it's always slower the very first time you launch Eclipse than subsequent times okay so I'm gonna minimize this window a little bit so we can see it all and uh, if you want to look around uh, you can hover over these and I think yeah, there's a tutorial and you can click tutorials and you can say C++ development and it looks like it's opening a separate help window and then so there's some getting started information We'll probably go over a lot of this um, in class but feel free to read up on whatever you want I'm gonna I'm gonna close this for now and um, and I'm just gonna close this welcome window and I believe you can always get back to this oh I don't remember it's here somewhere trust me <laughs> um, Okay, so we're in the Project Explorer on this left panel, and we want to create a C++ project. So we're going to say File, New, C++ Project. Um, I don't know much about Auto Tools and some of these, so let's just stick with the standard C++ project. And um, we can do an executable. Hmm. All it's letting me do here is the auto tools. I'm not sure why. Okay, I went and installed all this on another computer and it, it worked correctly. So it may be my development tools, but here I just um, unclicked this and then the executable opened up and then I turned it back on and now it's still here. But So this is what I wanted. I, if, so if you have troubles, we'll have to try and solve it. Um, in class, but first try clicking that off and see if you can get to a Hello World C++ project and then just go to the MinGW GCC and let's call this Hello World and um, 
We'll click next and you can put your name in here if you want you can skip all this doesn't really you know um, copyright into this copyright I'll give my company name Sinclair Systems Inc and then we'll get rid of all let's just say hello C++ students you can skip this step too if you want okay and then source this is going to create a folder called SRC for your source code and that's fine so we'll leave that we'll six next it has the concept of debug and release folders um, and we'll, we'll leave that alone for now um, and then I'll probably go through explaining exactly what what this means later but we'll just say finish here and it'll set up a basic main for us and a basic C++ code and there you go there is your first C++ program actually all written for you if you come over here to project explorer you can see something called includes and something called source so if all is good you uh, won't get any errors you should be able to okay if problems happen they show up in the problems window an equally important window is this console window kinda shows you even more levels of detail but we can right click on hello world at this point and say build the project and then it should build and we have no problems that looks good if we go to the console we'll see all the tools that that ran the G++ compiler ran and um, it's interesting I expected it to show me an exe um, okay well let's see if we can get this to run now to get a program to run you have to set up what's called a run configuration if you just click here nothing's gonna happen I don't believe oh looks like it well, it looked like it tried to build it again. Oh, it did work. Okay, well, maybe that's all you can do. I'm surprised. Um, you, usually, I'll, I'll do this anyway. You have to come in here and say run configuration. And somehow it was smart enough to, to do this for us. And then normally, you see this hello world exe. This is not here. You normally, you click a new configuration, a new launch configuration. And then you specify the project that you just created. But it did it all for us. So hopefully that will work for you as well and the console window actually showed the output of our program so if you get that far then we're golden that's terrific and everything is working um, and then we can go over there's all all sorts of configuration and things you do and we'll save that for later but see if you can get it uh, that far get all the tools built and the compiler running and you're set